Hi, I'm Lynn Chapman. Um, I'm an author and an illustrator of children's books, and I've been doing that now for about, I think I've been doing children's books for about 12 years. Um, and I've been a freelance illustrator, oh dear me, for a long time. <laughs> I didn't actually train in illustration, which some people find quite unusual. It's not as unusual as you would think, in fact. People do cross over between the different design disciplines quite a lot. Um, I actually did a degree in textile design. And what happened really was I, I had my degree show with all my textiles fabrics that were all like dead fish in repeat. Um, but I had my sketchbooks because I've always kept sketchbooks I love to draw and, and I had some of these sketchbooks full of um, my textile designs and it's different all sorts of different things that I was interested in at the time but what was important was that I made sketchbook covers for all my sketchbooks and because it was a textiles course and I had access to screen printing facilities I designed and printed, hand printed, lots of different sketchbook covers and I put all sorts of pictures, that, believe it or not, is me <laughs> when I was about 20. Um, I put lots of different pictures on the covers and these were all arrayed in front of my fabrics and I was lucky enough to have a greetings card company come to my degree show and they happened to be producing a range of greetings cards that they wanted to be young and funky which wasn't what they were doing at that time. And they said, oh, do you fancy having a go at doing that? I was quite excited by the idea that somebody was paying me to draw. And that kept me going for quite a while. But after a while, I started to get really, really tired of trying to think of another way to illustrate a Christmas tree. So I decided I would try and get into the editorial illustration um, work because that's slightly easier to get into than, than children's books. And the reason for that is that editorial, which means um, magazines and newspapers, they, those magazines go out maybe every month, every week, even they might be free magazines. There's a lot less money riding on a particular illustration for a particular article in a particular magazine that will be sort of in the bin next week. So the people who commission the artwork take a lot more chances on new people in the editorial industry than they will in children's books. So it was quite a good way to, to sort of move into. But I needed a completely new portfolio. So what I did, I booked a trade show for illustrators. And so I had, I can't remember how many sort of feet of wall space, but I had this big, big wall that I had to fill with my illustrations um, for editorial. It's very important if you're putting together a portfolio that you use real stuff to illustrate. So if it's children's books that you're wanting to put a portfolio together um, to show what you can do, actually illustrate real stories. For me, because it was editorial, I went and bought loads of different kinds of magazines and tried to illustrate the articles. One of the interesting things about editorial that I didn't know at the time is that there are hundreds of little trade magazines and things like Sheep Shearers Weekly, <laughs> Accountants Monthly, all these kind of things. And you get loads and loads of work for those. And I've actually got quite a good one here to show you that does, does this. I, I got, it's um, from an, a medical magazine. I can't remember which one, but a trade magazine for doctors and nurses. And the article was about people who go to the doctors and they've got some really serious personal problem and they don't tell him. In fact, they, they go and say, oh, I've got a sore throat, <laughs> rather than I'm impotent. <laughs> And that was what I had to do. I had to do this article on impotence. And so, so this was the idea that I thought, right, I'll have the person sort of thinking, oh gosh, if only I had the courage and actually show what he's really thinking about in his thought bubble. So that was the kind of work that I was doing. So it was quite high pressure, but very challenging. And so it was quite exciting. This is the very first book that I ever did. Um, when I took that uh, a new portfolio of work round, trying to break into children's books, um, I went down and I showed lots of different publishers. And people were very complimentary and they all said, oh yes, yes, lovely, lovely, but nobody gave me any work. And I was beginning to think this was all never going to work. Um, and then I hit lucky. And often this happens, you, know, you just have to keep at it and your luck turns. 
and I went to see a, a publisher that was then called David and Charles. And they happened to have this story on their desk. It had already been commissioned and illustrated, but the illustrator had done it in a very, very different way to, to my style, and they didn't really like, although they liked the illustrator's work, it didn't really work for this particular book. As it happened, in my portfolio, my, my sort of make-believe children's book portfolio that I took round to the publishers, I happened to have an illustration of some singing dogs. And they saw my singing dog picture, and this, this actually features a singing cat. And they saw in my singing dogs how my singing cats might be, and gave me the job on the spot. <laughs> And so that was how I got my very first pitch book. And of course, once you've done one, the other commissions follow because unlike greetings cards and ed editorial work, tens of thousands of pounds hang on you actually delivering the artwork on time. And so they're very funny about actually letting new people in. It's quite hard to get in as a newcomer. But once you've demonstrated that you will deliver the work on time and that you're not going to get a wobbly halfway through and decide you can't do it, then more work follows. And so, and I actually still work for this particular publisher. They've changed their name now, uh, but I still work for this publisher 12 years later. And this book is still in print, which is lovely. I'm very pleased about that. Uh, now I'm working in children's books, I started to get invited to go and talk to children. And basically, I read the stories, I do the old Rolf Harris drawing on demand thing, um, I talk about what I do, and when they're little, a lovely thing that you can do as well is you can just play the goat, and you can become a six-year-old for half an hour, and, and I dress up, and we sing songs, and, and it, it's just an absolute laugh, and you get so much warmth back from the kids, and I let off so much energy but then when I come home, I'm quite happy to be on my own again in my studio. So it's an absolutely perfect balance with the illustration career that I could never have anticipated and actually has solved what was a huge problem when I was an editorial illustrator, uh, just by chance, really.